Welcome back to Y'all Hear Me This. My name is Kay. Thank you so much for coming back and joining us. Yes, and my name is Honeybee, or you can call me B, and whichever you choose is all right with who? Us. us. Here we are. Yes, yeah, so excited to get into the podcast today. So every Wednesday we do a deeper dive into a different group. So this week we are doing Big Bang. Yes, we are. Oh, this has been so much fun. So we do a couple MVs, we do a dance practice and a live, we do a uh, guide, and then we do the podcast. So thank you so much for coming and joining us. Yeah, I am really, really excited about this yeah. week's artist because yeah. that guide was everything so good mm. and of course we are talking about the listen the proclaimed kings of k-pop yeah if i'm saying that right right yeah k-pop yep. okay yeah kings k-pop. of k-pop yep big bang yeah it was mm. such a good guide mm. and it was really cool to hear like how they had started so many things even like calling the macne the macne yeah the light stick <clears throat> first like international tour first international kind of fandom yeah first calling the fandom a name yes um i mean geez that's so much stuff that's kind of like everyday thing like seriously when i first get into a group those are some of the first things i look up i was like what's their fan name what's their light stick yes. like what's this what's that you know so that's really cool and i do like the their light stick too it's like a, a crown which yeah cool. which it was like the i was gonna say it was a crown with the little it looked like it has... It reminded me of... I'm a big, like, Nintendo geek. It reminded me of Super Mario Brothers. The Princess Peach. Yeah, the yeah. Princess Peach, like, yeah, 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 with the yeah. little... Yep. Um, ...on it. So, uh, don't mind me, y'all. I'm just over here looking the, like, little things up because in the guide, um, it talked about uh, a lot, actually. But I just... I'm... Was, as I mentioned in the guide video, I'm such a nerd. So I always wonder like how many albums they release, yeah. how many stuff like that. So I can um, only imagine it's probably too long to be listed even. No. So like it actually comes out. Um, it says, so they have eight studio albums. Wow. I mean, that's still a lot. Right. 10 live albums. Wow. That's awesome. I love live albums. Right. Me too. Eight compilation albums. Okay. And eight EPs. Wow. And then they have seven single albums, which I'm guessing would be maxi singles? Yeah. I they it's weird. They hmm. call some things EPs and some things like singles. Single album. And, yeah. yeah. But a lot of times too, if they're doing like a Japanese release of a song, they'll do like two songs or like mm. a song and the, like the Japanese version and then the Korean version or you know what I mean stuff yeah, like that yeah, or like yeah, an like instrumental or this or yeah so probably something like that okay because I was like I find that really really interesting yeah um, and then each member must have a pretty decent discography too just you know from the songs we were hearing on the podcast so. legit like yeah. just all kind of mixed on up the podcast, and just... on, in the guide <laughs> oh yeah the guide See, I'm all agreeing with you I was like yeah, yeah, yeah you yeah, right yeah. girl you podcast, right on the podcast yeah on the podcast <laughs> um and i was just looking to see what what was one of their last releases well um, they did they, I, we watched be, a, a video from 2022 so that's yep. gotta be it yeah i was gonna say it is 2022 yeah yep. That's crazy. Okay, so let's get into the nitty gritty. Mm -hmm. Um, so what was your uh, obviously I know we mentioned some of the stuff already, but what was your biggest takeaway from the guide? Mm -hmm. And who is your Sem uh, who, my, who my are first your... my first bias reaction? Yes, okay. who, yes, yes. And yeah, who so who who did you who were you drawn to the most and why? And yeah. That? So my biggest takeaway was I kind of already said it was just like how many firsts yes. they had and like yes. how like instrumental they were in like paving the way for yes. like K-pop today, you know, mm -hmm. um, which I know some of you guys have mentioned in comments and things like that, too. So mm -hmm. it's just cool to learn more. Um, and my person was probably T.O.P. Mm. or G-Dragon. I don't know. G-Dragon. There's something about him like A, he's mm -hmm. beautiful. Mm -hmm. um, and B, he can pull off like any look. I love a man who will wear like feminine clothing or like just like do so different things to their hair. Like I love that. Uh, um, I almost mentioned ATs. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, it reminds me of Hong Jun. Yeah. Hong Jun from ETs. I don't know. Anyway, 
But like, he just has this something to him that's very like, oh, yeah, he's just gorgeous. And I liked his like personality too. But T.O.P., that is like, I love a weirdo. Yes. And also extremely beautiful. And ooh, that voice. Listen. Ooh, that, voice, that voice. Let me tell you something. Yeah. When I tell you that T-A, uh, T.O.P. Mm-hmm. just. Yep. Listen, I'm literally sitting here looking up. I was like, you know, let me look up and see, you know, what's going on. We can't see your beautiful face. Right. I was like, let me back. I know I'm sitting here looking down. I was like sitting here looking up stuff about T.O.P. Because he's that fine. You distracted me. I'm trying to do a job right now. Hold on. Right, right, right. No. um, My takeaway definitely from the guide was I thought it was incredible to see just all the first that they did. Yes. Um, definitely. I think also I, because I'm new to K-pop mm-hmm. and I'm learning in 2023 now, you know what I mean? Um, when I heard the term the kings of K-pop, I automatically went to BTS yeah. just because it's just the right. BTS. It's just right what I've been exposed to. Yep. Yeah. So to hear all this, it's like, it's like somebody saying, like, I don't know, let's say it's 2000. That's like somebody saying NSYNC is like the kings of pop. And then you learn about the Jackson 5. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's yeah. like, that's how I feel. It's like, oh, BTS is like the kings of K-pop. But then you hear about Big Bang. And it's yeah. like, Big Bang's like, oh, no, 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 no. Excuse Hello. us, excuse right. us. Right, we're the group with the Michaels. You know what I'm saying? Right, right, like, right, we're right. the group with this and this and that. Right. Like, you know what I mean? Like, we're the Jackson 5. Like, we're the first to really do it. And I think, I think, like, don't get me wrong, I love BTS, and I think that there are things that they did that oh, of course. who came yeah. up and things like that. But yeah, they, I mean, Big Bang just had, like... I mean, they created the whole idol landscape. Yeah. You know what well, I mean? Well, I mean, it was in place before then because I believe they're considered second gen. Please correct me if I'm wrong. So they still, they're still like, I don't think Idols was a new thing, but I think, excuse me, they definitely paved the way for the BTSs, for like the Stray Kids, for the, you know, that sort of thing. Like the the hair, the outfits, the just more, it sounds more like aggressive, maybe kind of sounding music, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Where perhaps that wasn't so true before, you Mm -hmm. know? Mm -hmm. Um, But yeah, I mean, that was just, and it's crazy that YG, which is so huge now, um, you know, basically they, you know, the CEO said it, that they made YG, you know, Mm -hmm. which is crazy. Yeah, like, I mean, it's just, at the end of the day, they just had a lot of influence over yeah. what we see and hear today. Mm-hmm. Um, For sure. I definitely like T.O.P. He definitely mm-hmm. stood out to me. Um, I really liked... I'm looking at my little cheat sheet. Um, I definitely like T.O.P. G-Dragon. Definitely like... I just love his whole overall aesthetic. Yeah, Like, he is just it's very a perfect much word for it. like... It's just, he's everything. Like, if I was an artist, Mm -hmm. I would, like, that would be how I would go about it. Like, I compare that to, like, I always, like, people ask me, like, oh, who do you love as an artist? Their aesthetic, their style, their everything. I always say Missy Elliott, right off the grip. Mm -hmm. Like, he reminds me of a male version of Missy Elliott. Like, he's daring. He does what he likes. And it always works yeah it could be the craziest thing and it will always work the same thing i feel about lady gaga yep. lady gaga yeah. could literally wear a meat dress yep and make it look incredible mm-hmm. and it's like you just did a whole political statement mm-hmm. like i love that so g dragon top i mean for his the way he rhymes for his voice for his weirdness i love that yeah i was so attracted to that i yeah. was like ah, ah, T.O.P., you better stop right right g dragon too you better back up right, you better right, stop right. applying all that pressure <laughs> um and i really like day song yeah like, oh yeah oh, he was great especially in the like the skits and stuff yes, like he was so funny. i was dying he said the smell the smell, the smell. but i loved what i loved about him too is his 
his like facial structure, Ooh, like yeah. just everything stunning. about him was just stunning. But he just was hilarious. Yes. Like yeah. just hilarious. I mean, tag too. Like yeah, I, just, yeah. uh, I love them all. So like, yeah, yeah, I, yeah. like they just all was so good. Um, so I definitely found like. Just their overall story was just super dope. Yeah, I love that G Dragon and Taeyang were friends for so long. Mm -hmm. um, and then I believe it was also T.O.P. had known him for quite some time, too. Uh, yeah, because he had told G Dragon told him to, uh, you know, um, interview and, mm -hmm. and uh, you know, apply for YG. Mm -hmm. um, but that's awesome that they were friends for so, so long. Uh, and it was G Dragon, right, that had been the trainee. Like he had been in a kids group too. Yeah, yeah. I think it was G Dragon. He was in a kids group and then that. Like left for a year and then and got then back he wasn't into even going to do music. Yeah, yeah, he, yeah, had, yeah. he was like ready to quit. Yeah, and it's then he, so crazy. He came right back well, to Well, thank it. goodness because also, uh, actually, we didn't even talk about this, but I love that they're huge producers and stuff like that. And what, like the first group that did that, which is awesome. Uh, produced their own music, wrote their own music. And Weird. Yeah, well, that's what they were saying. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, yeah. Then, I had to think about it for a second because I was like thinking about, I keep thinking about T.O.P. And I keep thinking about his voice. And I just, <laughs> that's it, folks. That's it, it threw folks. me off. It's, I was the like, K, huh? it's the K yeah. only podcast and B's with T.O.P. Right, right. That's it. I just, uh, I split my time between T.O.P. and um, G. T.O.P. Yeah, you, you know me. me. Oh man, um, yeah, and that he is the idol with the most. Yes, yes, with yeah. the most yes, seventy someone and like time. the songwriting and yeah, everything. Oh my awesome. god, which is which kind of reminds me of. Um, it makes me think of. Oh god, I should have used this as my bees nectar of the week this yeah, week because yeah. that reminds me of Pharrell and he's yeah, in a group yeah. called N N E R D, N -E -R -D yeah. and. Well, I you got know, to see them live once. So awesome. Did you really? Yeah. Oh, you got to see him and Chad Hugo, yeah, yeah, the yeah. legendary right Neptunes. Right. Ah! Yeah, it was in Boston. Yep. That's incredible. I'm jealous. Mm, and, this is uh, the B podcast and, now. And, um, <laughs> oh, who? Oh, not not Bill Bivdivo. Oh, Run DMC. Why did I get oh, those two? Oh, my mixed God. Up? But yeah, yeah, yeah. You saw Legendary. I know. It was so much fun. Legends. <laughs> Can't over here doing legendary shit. Just leave them motherfuckers out. Like, ah, okay, this girl. Was, this was like 20 years ago. Ah, ah, I mean, I, I, listen, I would have been able to go out 15. Listen. Ah, ah. I didn't know you then. I didn't ah, know you then. Ah. <laughs> <laughs> no, that's incredible though. Yeah. I, but that's but that's what that reminds me of. It reminds me of you just have these really good groups and they always just have it's the talent in it. And the fact that they let them nurture it and you know what I mean? And it helped grow their success wildly, I'm sure. You know what I mean? It's so incredible. Because again, I've said this before, I'll say it again a million times. It just means more when you're able to work on it yourself in that way, you know? And some companies let people do it, some some don't. And I'm not saying it's not of course it's fine to use professional writers and stuff like that, you know. You it's not that you can't still have a great song, but for me personally, I think it means more when it comes from the artists, you know? That's just kind of my... You're so funny. You're still like, D.O.P. I, I you're know. Like, you're like in the tiny little no. corner of the screen. I know. I know. And actually, I'm looking down too because I wanted to get prepared. Yeah. Because we had kind of talked about it. Okay. In, um... And they didn't get into it in the guide, but they showed a picture of... Um, Soon, I can't. Soongri. Soongri. They showed a picture of him. Um, and the way that the picture was kind of lit, like led up, which I will say in other um, guides too, I always laugh because in the guides, whenever there's some sort of drama or something that happens, they try to like stray away from it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Which, which I just. Is, is understandable. I mean, it's. Un so here's my thing it's understandable, but also it's like. If you're truly gonna be like realistic about like if you're like if you're gonna be talking about music or whatever the case may be, like then just it, it's honest. It's there's nothing wrong with talking about what happened because it happened. Yeah. Now it's like you could put it out there. It's not like, you know what I mean, you're gonna be whatever. So it's just it's not to like to draw negativity towards yeah, yeah. it, but it's just it's a part of the group's history yeah. and their story. Did you read about so, what happened? Yes. Okay. So 
Do you, did you? I don't know if you ever. Nope, I have no idea. No idea. No. The nothing. only thing that I've heard before is that he retired. Okay, so this is what it says on Wikipedia. Okay. So just throwing it out there. We are not experts. We don't know. This is just for anybody that's like sitting here wondering what happened. Okay. How do you pronounce his name again? Because you Songri. Because you all know I'm. Okay. Actually, you know I'm gonna let you read it because okay. you know Kay's really good at catching on to like Korean like enunciation and like. Well, well, on March 11th, 2019, Sungri departed from Bing Bang and retired from the entertainment industry after he allegedly supplied sex workers in 2015 and was charged with sexual bribery and embezzlement. He was convicted in 2020 after the police investigation of the Burning Sun scandal. Sungri's military trial commenced on September 16, 2020, where he denied seven of his eight charges. A military court found Sungri guilty on all charges and sentenced Sungri to three years of imprisonment and a fine of 1.15. 1.15 billion won, which is about $970,000, on August 12th, 2021, which was reduced to 18 months on January 27, 2022, based on his admission of guilt. During the sentence reduction, Sungri pleaded guilty to all charges brought against him and expressed that he will reflect on his actions. Okay, well then. <sighs> so! <laughs> gotcha. There's that. Yeah. So that's what happened, which... You know what? Like in a situation like this, thank God you have a group of just talented people, yeah. which is why it's like, again, even though like something like that happens, it just the group is still talented. It's still, you yeah, know, what yeah. I mean? and they're going to go, go on. They can go yeah. on. And, you know, unfortunately, stuff like this happens all the time to the point where like people don't even know that it's happening. Yeah, so, yeah. you know what I mean? A lot of the things that we hear about our favorite groups might not be put out in public. So it's just, you know, it is what it is. It's a part of the the story of how the group has gotten to where they are. And, you know, it's unfortunate, but that happened, but they're still carrying on. And mm -hmm. there's still, you still got, you know, three amazing members that are still carrying the group's legacy on mm -hmm. and they're doing it in a phenomenal way. Yeah, so, 17 years later, you know, they got together in 2006. It's so crazy. That's great. And if you think about mm -hmm. it, I mean, I mean, in the guide, it said, like, some of them were training before that. So yeah. did they form in 06? Or did so they just first I always go by them? their debut okay. date. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. They're probably year together more. Prior to that. But right, like, right, right. Yeah, but... It, it's like, that's crazy. It's like saying, oh, we've been married for 10 years, but we've been together for 15. Right, like, right. it's like one of that's those. That's kind of that. Exactly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's it, exactly. So that's you count, crazy. you count the debut years, but yeah, uh, for like friends and knowing each other. Mm. Um, I think that, I think that was where G Dragon and Taeyang like met each other was when they were, you know, like going to the trainees together. and one out. Yeah. Yeah. That's crazy. Yeah. They're, they're. They're incredible. Yeah. I'm a, definitely a so fan. So talented. Definitely want to like learn more and get more into their stuff. Um, and is this a good segue? Oh, I think it might be. Okay. So, so tell, tell us, tell us what we're segueing into okay. and what what it entails. Okay. So we're gonna go ahead and segue into Bee's Nectar of the Week. That's right. So Bee's Nectar of the Week is basically a part of the show where I will suggest an artist or group um, to you guys who sound and just energy or for whatever reason um, gives off just kind of like similar taste and whatever to the artists we're featuring that week on the podcast. And so I usually give Kay some hints. Yeah, I think I'm going to um, need a hint this week. Yeah, because she usually gets it right sure. off the grip. I'm not sure on this one. This was a tough one. Yeah, because there's a couple ways to go. There's a few different ways you can go about it. Mm -hmm. And I actually went about this based off of the um was it the mama's performance that we watched yes okay so off of that performance alone just the energy what they were bringing the whole shebang there was one group that i thought of okay and this was really hard because again could have went different ways about it mm -hmm. but i went a completely different way i went strictly off of the simple fact that the group that i picked they're legends okay they have definitely created a lane, um, and the lane that they created definitely was expand upon 
Um, they definitely created a sound that ended up being taken and run with. It just felt like for them, it was like they also created the first of many. Okay. And that's what it reminds me of Big Bang. Like, I feel like Big Bang created the first of many. Yeah, yeah. And now this group that I picked, they pick, they were the first of many to come after them. Um, I, the hints that I will give you is they are not a pop group. Okay. All right. Okay. They are a band. Okay. They formed in the late 80s, but really rose in early, yes. early 90s. Okay. They are very eclectic. Okay. Um. I, wow, I don't. And. A band. Early 90s, late 80s, early 90s. I don't okay. know if this is true or not, but I feel like it would be true. Okay. Oh, yeah. They could be involved, involved, or they they could be involved in a type of food competition. Red Hot Chili Peppers? Yes! <laughs> yes! That was what I wanted! She knew! She knew, bitch! Yeah! Okay. Don't I, sleep on K! Don't sleep on K! I absolutely can see that. Absolutely. Absolutely. Like, flee... It's kind of like the T.O.P. Okay. Anthony Kiedis is definitely the G-Dragon. Yeah, okay, okay. Do you okay. see what I'm saying? I do, I do. Do you see what, do you get it? Yeah. Because that's how, because it was either that or I was looking at Foo Fighters. Okay, yeah. And. So, yeah. Yeah, yeah. But I went more with Chili Peppers. Yeah. I it's think, just the I energy think, and the, that's it, the exactly. brassness. Yep. Like, the we're going to do what they, we like, want. will perform in socks. Yes. Like, only a sock. And only in socks and nothing else will be completely naked. Yeah, yeah. And they will do it as a group. Yep. And it's just like they all go with the vibe. And then at yes. the same time. Oh, my God. That's you, perfect. You take them apart. They're their own person. Yeah, you yeah, You put yeah. them together. It's this massive fucking ball of legendary yeah so that is crazy how well that works i love that one. That, that that's, bananas? that's my favorite nectar of the week so far me too i'm not even gonna lie that is my favorite, my favorite. because i was like oh. it's not obvious but mm -hmm. when you think about it it's obvious and and it shows it shows y'all how much we really, really, really love music yeah. because it's like i feel like stuff like that and you have to really nitpick down the nuances yeah, and yeah, yeah. just little details yes. and i'm so and i knew you were gonna catch on to it and i was like she's gonna catch on to it like she's they gonna had catch a, on the to big it. microphone top had in the before yeah that's something that, that was totally they would do yes i feel like yes. they've done something similar yeah, oh, I remember, wow, do you remember how well does that work so what also made me think of it mm -hmm. was i think it was was it g dragon who came out it first came out during the Mama's performance. No, it was T.O.P. I mean, it was not T.O.P. Um, not first came out. I'm thinking of the type of song that G-Dragon did. It was very punk poppy. Yeah, yeah. Reminded me of his performance. I don't know why. It reminded me of Red Hot Chili Peppers okay. performance of Give It Away on the VMAs. Okay. I, I think it was. Yeah, and yeah. it was just, it gave it that. Away, it yes. Yeah, it yeah. gave that energy. And I was yeah. like, okay, all day. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So. Yeah, I could see it. It's um, it's it's definitely a, a some different type of genre. Sure, of, music. of course, of course. But there's but some similarities like, yeah, exactly. too. I can see, I can see similarities in some of their music. Yeah. And they definitely started that kind of like California punk kind of sound. Yes. For I, sure. Californication. Well, like that, well, that's even that a album, later. I know. That's a real later But like their album earlier album. albums, yeah, yeah, yeah. definitely. Yeah. But Californication was the one that I definitely. Yeah, yeah. Because I, I definitely love Under the Bridge. bridge. <sighs> what a good song. Do you remember our friend Carlos used to do that every time at karaoke? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yes! Oh my God! Yes! I want to feel. Right. Like I did that day. They were doing the bass I live. Copy written from singing. I know, I can't say that forever. I'm like, take me to the place I live. Oh, yeah. the singer loves you. Okay. <laughs> Remix, you can't get us now. <laughs> uh, <laughs> so I'm going to give you guys um, a little spiel about Red Hot Chili Peppers. I'll try to speed <laughs> this up, make it quick. Mm -hmm. All right, so. <laughs> da 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 da. 
The Red Hot Chili Peppers are a rock band based in Los Angeles, California that incorporates elements of rap, funk, punk, and rock into their work, mainly classified as an alternative rock band. Yeah. They made it mainstream off the success of their 19... And mind you, this is their fifth album. Yeah, yeah. So they didn't even make it into their fifth album. Wow. Which was 1991's, yep, Blood Sugar, Sex, and Magic, Magic, which was led by the singles Give It Away Mm -hmm. and Under the Bridge. Mm -hmm. Oh, do you remember that video? It's like playing in my head right now. It's like, oh my God. So it says, after losing guitarist John... um, for Santi, mm-hmm. um, and losing popularity following the release of their less successful album, One Hot Minute, the band reunited for 1999's Californication. Mm-hmm. So that's when I feel like I knew of the songs Give It Away and Under the Bridge. I never listened to like the albums mm-hmm. though, because I was, I mean, they came out when I was younger. Yeah. Um, but when California Cation came out, I was 11. Gotcha. And that was in 1999. And I just remember that album because. I one played it, but like I scar tissue yeah. will always be one of my, I feel like one of the greatest songs ever made was scar tissue. And I also really like just California case in the mm-hmm. title track. Um, but the title track it was a hit single as well as the songs around the world, scar tissue and other side. I still love other side. Um, and it propelled them back into fame. Um, after 2002's um, solid release, by the way, and 2006's double disc Stadium Arcadium. Mm-hmm. Um, oh, that's right. I forgot about that one, too. Um, the guitarist John um, Frasanti. Mm-hmm. I don't know if I'm saying that right, so I apologize. Um, he once again left the band to further his uh, solo career. Mm-hmm. Um, and then they, he was replaced with somebody else. And then they released an album in 2011 called I'm With You. Um yeah, I was going to say, I don't know if they're still together. Yeah, it says in December of 2019, the band announced on Instagram that Klinghoffer had, um, who was the replacement yep. of Sacy, um, had left the group and that the original guitarist, John Fasanti, Fris- uh, is going to be coming back. Oh, nice. Um, and with him, they would write and record a heap of material that would be sorted into two... 22 uh 2022 releases they released two albums unlimited love and return of the dream canteen how i am like under a rock because i don't remember that at all yeah like seriously 2022 is kind of when i got into k-pop so right (laughs) and i actually remember when those albums came out just because i feel like they both made history for some reason and i'm gonna tell you right now rhode island no longer has a great alternative station because bru is gone and it sucks so just saying. It is what, you can, listen. You can sometimes hear some BRU stuff when if you're in Providence and listen to a local channel, but yeah. Facts. It sucks. So the band originally got together and was created in 1983 by Anthony Kiedis and mm-hmm. Flea. Mm-hmm. And um, What's as the well as name Chad Chad something Chad Smith Chad Smith okay so Chad Smith that looks came exactly in, like Will Ferrell yes <laughs> so Chad Smith came in 1988 mm-hmm. and then um, so and then um, John Frasanti um, came in 1988 and then left yeah. in 92 came back yeah, in yeah. 98 couple times back in and, 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 out, forth, back and, forth. and out so that's the um, that is the current lineup is Anthony Kiedis. Flea, Chad Smith, and John Frasanti. Nice. Um, and yeah, so that is the history and the the craziness that is Red Hot Chili Peppers. Absolutely go look up some of their live performances. But yeah, MTV, I remember like MTV Spring Break. Yes. I think that was the sock one, yes. if I'm remembering correctly. Oh, you know what? Before I forget. And then, uh, yeah, just I can, like every time I remember seeing them on some sort of award show or whatever, it was always like crazy and just so much fun. And yeah, I can see exactly what you mean by them and Big Bang. Oh my God. You know, it, like you said, the energy is like a perfect. Yeah. It's such a good match. And you know? um, just to throw this out there, just because they deserve their flowers. Yes. The Red Hot Chili Peppers have sold 120 million records worldwide, nice. making awesome. the Red Hot Chili Peppers one of the best selling bands of all time. That's amazing. They hold the record for most number one singles as a band with 15. Wow. Uh, most cumulative weeks at number one on all Billboard charts, which is 91, and the most top 10 songs 
on the Billboard Alternative Songs chart with 28. Wow. They have won six Grammy Awards. Nice. They were inducted into the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame in 2012. Mm -hmm. And in 2022, they received their very own Hollywood Walk of Fame star. Nice. Very cool. So that is the life. That's awesome. And I the really, continuing life of yeah, the that's Red Hot cool. Chili Peppers. I'll have to check out some of their newer stuff because I just don't think I've heard any of it. Yeah. But I'm I, actually kind of intrigued too because I can honestly say I feel like the last time I really listened to their music was probably... I remember Stadium Arcadium had Stadium one Arcadium. hit off of it that I yeah. liked. I can't remember. It was like Roller Coaster maybe. Roller Coaster. Uh, I'm pretty sure that was from that. Stadium Arcadium? Um, Stadium Arcadium had five singles. Danny California. Oh, right, 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 right. Tell Me Baby, mm -hmm. Snow, mm -hmm. um, Discretion, Smile, and Humpty Bump. Nope. Uh, Danny California, I remember, but yeah. Uh, anyway, th that's whatever. Right, but yeah, right, right. I do remember that. But yeah, I don't think I've really heard anything from them since then. But yeah, uh, they were always like... <gasps> oh, I used to... Sorry, I just... I was looking because we were just looking at their songs. And I just... I remember By The Way. Yeah, I used yeah, to love yeah. that song. And yeah. the Zypher song. Yeah. Oh my God. Okay. Sorry, go ahead. It's okay. No, <laughs> it's like, but yeah. What a whole Red Hot Chili Peppers little... Yeah, they were always like a band. It's funny because I've never... I don't think I've ever like listened to a whole album, but I remember like anything I heard by them ever I liked. Do you know what I mean? No, mm. I think I did own Blood Sugar Sex Magic. Mm. But yeah, uh, my parents were thrilled at that title. Um, <laughs> they were so excited to get that. They were one. like, this is exactly what we want our daughter to have. Right, yeah. Oh, let me tell you. Oh, we, were, we weren't allowed to watch MTV growing up. Did I ever tell you that? Wait, this, I was going to say, this is a perfect segue yeah, yeah, yeah. into um, our little say what section and the say what, say what <laughs> section. <laughs> is basically a palate cleanser, whether yeah. it's based on the same subject or something completely different. It's like how we like to close out our episodes and whatnot. Mm -hmm. um, and a good palate cleanser this week, and it was just because you were just saying, like, my parents and this, this, and that. And the, we were talking about Red Hot Chili Peppers performing naked. Yep. What was your life growing up like with parental advisory stickers? Mm -hmm. And how did you, or, or like MTV, all that type of stuff, and what type of household were you in? And how did you get around it if you were in a household that did not allow that? For sure. Um, so my parents were pretty strict about music. They didn't like us listening to anything like rap or anything like that. They just didn't like the swears. They didn't like like the... Subject matter, all that. Yeah, like the making women objects and that sort of, you know what I mean, sort of thing. So, um, you know, I grew up listening to like classic rock stuff, which I still love, you know, Beatles, Rolling Stones, Pink Floyd, blah, 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 blah. Mm. Actually, my mom even followed some of those groups around. Mm, but, um, she was a roadie. Yep, yep. Okay. Queen and Pink Floyd. Anyway. Ooh. So, yeah. So, um, so how we get around it is A, cool babysitters. Yep. We always let me stay up late and watch uh, MTV with them. Mm. When it was like the summertime, we'd be home and I'd be like babysitting the, my brothers. And, um, you know, we would just watch it then, you know? Mm. Um, uh, yeah, I'm trying to think. Um, and then just it kind of like grew. So it would be things like, I remember when En Vogue came out. Yeah. And I really wanted that CD, yes. but it was... Mm -hmm. It was R and B mm -hmm. and blah blah blah. And it Luka. wasn't. It wasn't in the realm of yeah. Your Joni Mitchells. Yeah, no, it was not. Yes. So I had to convince my mom, and I think I even played her like my loving or something. Oh, you know I mean? was it for the Funky Divas album? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh my god! Yeah, yes! So I played her that just to, so she could see that it wasn't like it's like empowering the demon rap, you know? Right, what I mean? right, kind right, of thing. right. And it's so funny because my mom now is like, you know, she she wouldn't listen to it, but she doesn't really. You know, yeah, she doesn't really. Get it, it wasn't. It wasn't. I don't know. Yeah. It was the times we were in, exactly. and also what was like the way that it was presented on TV yeah, and different exactly. yeah, influences like, like I'm about sure it. She saw some sort of like yeah, Dateline video. special, or something. sixty minutes. Exactly. Okay, like exactly. special, like exactly. what's your kids listening to? Like exactly. you know what I mean? Yeah. Um, which is so crazy. I remember they used to do that for Mail and Manson all the time. Oh, know. yeah. Oh, yeah. Anything like that, too, for sure. Mm. And, yeah, so we always had to buy our CDs at, like, Walmart or whatever. Yes. Because it was automatically yep. parental. Uh, do they still do that? I don't know. I'm pretty, probably. I'm like, um, when's the last so time I ever I bought a CD? I remember buying the Nirvana <laughs> Nevermind tape. Yes! 
And the only oh. reason I was able to buy it was because there was a sticker over the babies. Because <laughs> it's a naked baby in a pool. Yep. Yep. So thank thank you, employee of wherever, for putting that sticker yes, on there. Which yeah. side note, I miss the days of like going through tapes yeah. and like pulling them out. They would it would be a little it'd be a tape this big. And the but the damn movie. package would be like this big. It'd be yeah. like a whole thing and it's like Yeah, yeah. You needed like Fort Knox and like a saw to get yes! it out of there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. For and they sure. used to do the same thing with CDs yeah. too. I remember when I bought Mariah Carey. I used to buy <laughs> this was back in the day when CDs would scratch to the point where you yeah. had to get another copy, yeah, yeah. which is why probably like a lot of artists probably had a crap ton of like album sales back then. Yeah. Because I remember going and buying Mariah Carey's Music Box album and it was a CD that was like this big, but then the package was like this and yeah. the CD was in the middle and then it would just be the color of the album packaging. Yeah. So they had one from Mariah Carey's Butterfly. So the whole thing was tan. Like, yeah. and I'd be like, what is all this for? It was just anti-theft. <laughs> it, sure. like, it was just yeah, team yeah, too yeah. much. Yeah, exactly. But I yeah. can see that having to, you know, dot, listen, in, in my household, um, definitely oh, very different. Yes, yeah, yeah. But actually the same. Yeah, yeah. We were not, like, listen, if you caught us playing in a black household in the 90s, military as well. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, well, me too, yeah. You know what I mean? You hear someone cussing, yeah. you gonna see something coming around the door, right. whether it's a face, right? whether or it's a belt, a, belt. Yeah, <laughs> exactly, yeah. a wooden spoon that yeah, just ricochets, right? Whatever is happening, it just, those meat pounders. Listen, <laughs> I, I did not get beaten by meat. Right, for real. <laughs> a fucking wooden spoon comes out like a boomerang, just comes in like, <laughs> and just goes right back in the kitchen. <laughs> It puts some soap in your mouth and then right, just, oh, right, just the dial just goes uh, and just goes like, <laughs> <laughs> like a damn boomerang. Do you, I just, do you remember? I'm sorry, this is so apropos of nothing. Do you remember that that the Christmas movie, A Christmas Story? Yes, that my favorite when he got stuck. Oh, fuck. Yeah. I used to think fudge was a bad word after watching that movie <laughs> when I was younger. Obviously. He was like, "What did you do?" That's what I thought you just said. And I was like, "Fudge isn't that? That's not a bad word." I just thought I wouldn't get in the car and be like, "Oh, you know what?" She, she was like, being like, mm, "Took you three minutes and twenty two seconds to change the tire." Yeah. He was like, "Oh, you know what your wife, uh, what your son just said?" Yeah, yeah. yeah. And she goes, "What?" Me? <laughs> <laughs> my favorite part oh my god but um yes I, we would have ralphie moments yeah, yeah. in our house yes, if we heard we anything too. like yeah, that yeah um we definitely weren't allowed to watch mtv so we would sneak it yep and then it got to the point where my parents just stopped because for me specifically yeah, at a certain point once you get to be like i was like 14 yeah 15, you know what i mean <laughs> Well, it also, like, for me specifically, my parents knew that my thing was music. Mm -hmm. um, so they were not on me. Like, if I was watching MTV or VH1 or anything like that, they weren't really on us unless they, like, started paying attention yeah, to what was going on. Then yeah. they'd be like, mm, you could turn real world off. That ain't got nothing to do with music. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah, exactly. So, like, it was the same oh, thing with rap music. Yeah, yeah. You know? Um, but my brother used to listen to a lot of hip-hop and stuff mm -hmm. working out growing up. And they were not with it, but they were like, as long as you don't repeat or try to do any of that yeah. stuff, we're yeah. fine with it. Yeah. And yeah. just realize that it's just music. And yeah, I mean, I think but, at the end of the day, not that I'm happy that things were censored or whatever, but like, I you, know, it, um, uh, you know, I but, know. I, but I am happy that I guess my parents cared enough that they didn't want me to be exposed at such a young age. Yeah. yeah. And also I think, I think the biggest thing from my mom was kind of like, you know, watching rap videos in the nineties, there was quite a bit of objectification mm -hmm. of women. Like yeah. that was the main Hardcore. gist of 99% of them, you right. know, and there were very few female rappers that mm -hmm. were big and doing videos and stuff. I and mean, of course there was like the Queen Latifahs and the, yeah. you know, things like that, but well, I also, on, so I think that was like a big thing in my mom's eyes too, not yeah. just for me, but for my brothers. Well, and also just to throw this out there too, I think the reason that my family, again, and I think it comes down to cultures and whatnot. Yeah. I think the reason that my family um, or my parents were so a little more open as well is because in that time period, typical rap music was always associated with 
degrading mm -hmm. women. R&B music, the same thing. When in reality, it was happening in rock. It was oh. happening in, it was happening oh my God, everywhere. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And, you but, want some of like the hair metal band group. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Listen, yeah, 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 like, yeah, I mean, yeah. pour some sugar on me. Yeah, yeah, like, yeah. you know what yeah, I'm saying? Yeah. Like, there's all these groups at that time that were just doing, not just against women, but just in general, just super derogatory stuff. And it would always be like hip hop, R&B, the more cultured, urban type of music. That's, yeah, that, I mean, that's definitely a part of it too. And it definitely like shapes you there. growing up because yeah. I would never, it's funny because now as a grown up, you mm -hmm. look back and you go, oh, okay. You understand more a little bit about like prejudices that yes! kind of like come about. Listen. And like, you know, like at the time, my mom like thought that was like, what was best or whatever. Mm. But now thinking about it, it's like, you know, mm -hmm. like you were saying, there mm -hmm. are tons and tons. Yes. And it was just like, tons of like rock yeah. groups, white groups. Yes. And I think my parents were trying to teach us like, listen, we want you to be cautious of what you're listening yeah. to. Yep. We want you to understand it. But we also want you to understand that it's not just one genre of music. Oh, for sure. It is just in general, it's, everything yes. like it's yes. even in gospel music you will see some things that are very questionable wow, wow. you will hear things that are very questionable about the things that maybe it's not necessarily visual but it's what they're saying yeah, yeah. and it's like the same thing with like the parental advisory like do do i feel glad that things were censored i think i think what makes me happy is like we were able to Without those censored versions, we mm -hmm. wouldn't have known them. Well, true. Yes. Do you true, know what true, I'm true, saying? True. So, like, we wouldn't I have meant heard more like censored, like I'm like that. My that our parents censored us. Yes, but like also too, just in general, yeah. like when I think of juveniles back that ass up, we would have never. I don't think it would have been even remotely been able to come as big as it was without being edited. Yeah, yeah. Because then we were able to hear it on your Hot 106s. Yeah, uh, true. So speaking true. of Rhode Island, yeah, yeah. your 92.3s, yeah, yeah, your 107.1s. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Like, you know what I'm saying? So I feel like the the plus behind censoring and stuff like that, that's what it did because it was able to expose everybody to the music that we weren't necessarily allowed to. But at the same time, it's like you don't want to cross that boundary. Yeah. Exactly. Trying to not I know, take away such, artist expression. Exactly. It's so, it's such a fine line, mm -hmm. you, know, eh, you know. Which is probably why Red Hot Chili Peppers would perform yeah. naked to yeah. rebel. Or why Big Bang might, you know, they were the for one of the first groups to produce their own music. That wasn't normal. That yeah. wasn't something that yep. K-pop labels and stuff were letting their, you know what I mean, artists yeah. do. So it's like... They were just, you got to break them boundaries to see growth. Yeah, absolutely. You know what I'm saying? And Big Bang definitely did that work. Yeah, they really did. I, I mean, know, they this the has kids. Been, this has been just a great week. Mm -hmm. uh, like, I really enjoyed everything. We That first video was a little a little rough. <laughs> it was, it was. I, you know, I will be the first one to say, uh, you know. But, I, uh, but it, it was good. But yeah, it, 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 yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. But they, you learn. Yeah, exactly, exactly. Yep. And they obviously yep. did. No, yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah, definitely. Yeah. Definitely. definitely. Um, you know, and, and, and how much of it was the record, you know, all sorts mm, of stuff. But yeah. Um, but yeah, no, I think that was important to bring up uh, yeah. but but yeah we just really really like them sorry for the dogs guys yeah the dogs are saying they like them it's time for their too. dinner so they're like get down here right um, they're like girl if you don't stop we right, love right, big right, bang right, too right right, right 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 but we need to get right. you out but right seriously guys thank you so much definitely leave us some su more suggestions for big bang yes. um i think i might start in august i might do thursday free for alls i might do their solos Ooh. so i've done that for a couple groups and i've done it for shiny and for uh dream catcher so maybe I'll, mm. maybe I'll break that out because okay. uh because yeah i'm really interested i want to hear i want to yeah see more, see more. Yeah, yeah 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 suggest any things yes. with big bang any of their solo yeah. endeavors more live performances yeah maybe i'll do a whole concert for one of our apple listening parties yes. or something. I don't know. but yeah we we want more is what we're saying right more 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 uh, how do you how do you like it? Mama, mama. But yeah, thank yes. you guys so much you guys for so much. joining us. Yes. We love you. I'll see you next time.